With the vaccine now approved in Canada, our first shipment of half a million of these doses will arrive within weeks. Health Canada's approval of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is coming at a crucial time as provinces and territories are ramping up vaccinations in the community. Now that there are three vaccines approved and likely more to come, the Prime Minister maintains that any Canadian who wants a vaccine will be able to get one by September. But until then, there are still the variants of concern and questions about how significant the approval is of the AstraZeneca vaccine now. I'm joined by infectious disease specialist Dr. Susie Hoda and Dr. Zane Chagla. And we got lots of questions today about how effective the AstraZeneca vaccine is. And, and let's start by playing one of those. The AstraZeneca vaccine has an efficacy rate of about 62% or so, um, while Moderna and Pfizer's has an efficacy rate of over 90%. So it's safe to say um, AstraZeneca's is less effective. Does this mean that millions of Canadians will be vaccinated with a less effective vaccine? And uh, what are the implications of this? Dr. Chagall, I'll put that question to you. Yeah, so there's a couple of things there. One, that 62% efficacy for the AstraZeneca vaccine was based on a clinical trial that was done uh, in the UK, South Africa, and Brazil. Now, it's important to know the context. That was done at a time when COVID rates were actually increasing quite a bit throughout the fall and, and winter, whereas the Moderna and Pfizer data was actually done during the summertime where we saw COVID rates relatively lower. So the number may not be a complete match to compare apples to apples there. Add to that, you know, the people in the AstraZeneca trial, none of them ended up in hospital with COVID-19. And none of them ended up dying of COVID-19 after receiving the vaccine. And I think that's the most powerful part of this vaccine. Add thirdly that this is a vaccine that can be taken in, you know, essentially any location in fridges. It can be stored very easily. And so that portability, that ability to transport, that ability to expand its use actually means huge things. So, so this is a good vaccine. It may not be as perfect as Moderna and Pfizer, but for its purpose in the middle of a pandemic to prevent people from going to hospital and dying, it is an essential vaccine moving forward. You sound, I mean, is this a fair word? You sound excited. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we have a vaccine rollout that, that really needs supply. And this gives us more supply and more places to use it. We heard earlier in the show that South Korea and France are two countries that have restricted use of the AstraZeneca vaccine to people 65 and younger because they felt clinical trials didn't include enough seniors. Uh, Dr. Hoda, does it concern you that Health Canada has approved the use of this vaccine here in Canada for seniors 65 and older? So it's true that some countries have decided to not use this vaccine in people who are over the age of 65. However, I think it's really important to note that this is not because there's any evidence that it doesn't work in that age group or that it's not safe in that age group. It's purely because they didn't have enough people involved in the trials to know exactly how well it worked. So let's look at the other data that we have around the, the, the vaccine. Um, and some of the earlier studies did show that the immune response as measured in the blood of those who got the vaccine was uniform across different age groups. And now we're seeing some early data coming out of Scotland that's showing that across all age groups, including quite a few people involved who are uh, older in age, that even one dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine has reduced the risk of hospitalization in the cohort. Um, so we're starting to see some real benefits here. And I think it's important to balance our our desire to have more information um, with the absolute need to try and reduce the harms to older people who are, are disproportionately affected by this pandemic. So I, I think that it's a good thing that we've approved it for all age groups. I think we have time for one more video question. Let's uh, listen to that right now. I would like to know what are the differences between the three vaccines approved in Canada and will we have an option to choose one of the vaccines? So I'll ask each of you part of that question. First of all, Dr. Chagla, in about 45 seconds, what, what's a key difference uh, between these, these vaccines? So Pfizer and Moderna are mRNA vaccines. So they use mRNA to build the instructions to make spike protein, which causes the immune response. AstraZeneca is slightly different that it uses a virus that's not functional, that's harmless, to actually do the same thing, build the spike protein and set off the immune response. So that's the major difference in how these vaccines work. And Dr. Hoda, should people be able to pick between the vaccines? 
Well, I suspect we won't have the ability to do that, especially in the early stages of rolling it out. It's going to be about what's available. And as uh, Dr. Shagla had mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of this vaccine is it's easy to transport around because it doesn't require a freezer. So, you know, some locations that are more remote or more community based will, will likely be the, the first targets. We have about 20 seconds left, Dr. Hodeb. I'll ask the same question to you that I did of Dr. Chagla. Are you excited, optimistic? What's your reaction to now that we have three vaccines approved? I'm feeling very optimistic between increasing supplies of Pfizer as well as um, seeing another vaccine approved and the options opening up. You know, the more vaccine we can get out there, the quicker we can do it, the better. Dr. Hoda, Dr. Chagla, always great having you on the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me.